Hello guys, good to have you back. So today I'll be sharing with you how I made the 3D VFX shatter effect. And if you're not yet familiar with Node Video 3D shatter effect, I recommend you watch our full tutorial where we explain everything you need to know about the Node Video shatter effect. Now that I've got all that out of the way, the first thing I did before starting my editing was to make sure the timing was accurate. To do that, I added a time remap to the video clip. Below you will also find a full tutorial link on how Node Video Time Remap works in this video description. Now that I'm done adjusting the timing, the next step I took was duplicating the video layer. And replacing it with an empty footage of the same background. I followed this process because I had already added color correction to the video layer and I wouldn't want to have two separate videos with different colors. Next I dragged the background footage to where I wanted to add my shatter effect. To avoid confusion, I renamed the video layers. With that done, I proceeded to make sure the background footage matched the exact point where I wanted to add the shatter effect. Next, I added a shape mask and changed the shape type to linear. The show mask shows you the areas that you are masking out. With that, I easily mask out the character on red. To make everything look smooth, I blended the background footage by increasing the blur of the shape layer. To make my work easier, I hide the video background footage. This way I can see what I'm working with here. Next, I clicked on the video option and took a snapshot of the exact point where I wanted to add my effect. I quickly went to my browser to remove the image background of the video caption using Pixel Cut, and the website link is also provided in this video description. After removing the background of the image caption, I added the image to the timeline. Next, I trimmed and adjust the image size to fit the video frame correctly. I also added a shape mask to the image caption and masked out the character on black. And with that, here's a quick playback on how it looks. Next, I clicked on the image layer, go to Effect Properties, and selected the 3D Fracture effect. Again, I resized the image caption layer to fit the video frame size. To add animation, I added keyframes to the evolution property and tweaked the numbers to create the fracture effect. I reduced the size of the broken pieces by increasing the fracture effect detail. I'm going to go back and forth to find the point in time where I'll add my effect. Next, I proceed by adding keyframes to the rotation to control the motion movement of the fracture effect to make it look like I was controlling the broken pieces.
Next, I return back to the evolution property and keyframe the endpoint of the animation by tweaking the numbers back to zero. With all that done, here's a playback review. To make it look more realistic, I added curve to both keyframes and other to increase the speed of the fracture effect. To add more special effects, I added an adjustment layer. I trimmed and adjusted it to fit the start and end points of the animation effect. I'd like to create a shockwave look, so I go to the effect store and added ripple effect to the adjustment layer. Also, I tweak the evolution property, but first, I reduce the amplitude or intensity of the ripple effect. After that, I added keyframes to the evolution. Next, I also added a heatwave effect to get a desired look. So first, I reduced the intensity of the heatwave effect. I changed the scale of the heatwave effect over time to add animation, and to achieve that, I added keyframes to the start and end points of the adjustment layer. And lastly, I added shake effect to the adjustment layer. I also reduced the intensity of the shakes and turned on motion blur and tiling. So, I'm going to save the settings I've done on this shake effect as a preset. I'll proceed by adding shake effects to the image caption and applying the save preset. And just like that, all the settings done on the previous shake effect have been applied automatically. I also duplicate the effects layer and applied it at the end point of the animation. And now here's a playback review of the work done so far. So I decided to add a popular anime effect, and to find this effect, go to the effect properties, switch to style, and select invert. You can also choose to select a different channel type, but I recommend selecting the RGB type. Additionally, I'll add the effect at the end point of my animation. And now a final playback. And we've come to the end of this editing tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. If you learned something new today, kindly give us a like button and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Until next time, stay blessed.